Leeft, Senior Systems Engineer at Juniper Networks. And today I'd like to talk to you about one of the most overrated terms in the security industry, which is next generation firewalling. Something, something that's dominating our market for the last five years. Until now, nobody's made a good explanation on what it technically means and where it's very useful and basically where it's not. And based on a couple of whiteboarding examples, I'd like to talk you through a couple of those examples and what it means for your security setting. So if we look at what a next generation firewall means, we have to break it down in where it makes sense and where it doesn't. So typically where you deploy your firewalls comes down into two different settings. One is what we've called a data center deployment. And the other one is what we call a campus and a branch environment. So if we take a deeper look at the next generation firewalling term, we take what we call a neutral resource um, instead of, of taking what every vendor claims, to, claims it to be. So for that, we're taking a look at what Gartner means by the, definition, by the definition next generation firewall. And it really means four things. At first, you need to be what we've called a first generation firewall or a five tuple firewall. And typically, for the last couple of years, every firewall makes their allow or deny uh, uh, decision based on five different things. And uh, it's what we call a five tuple firewall. Everybody does that, from Cisco to Juniper and from Palo Alto to Fortinet. The next thing that you must qualify for is what they call an IDS or an IPS, an intrusion detection or an intrusion prevention system. Something that allows you to dig deeper into your data stream and to see whether code is malicious, yes or no, and make a more knowledgeable decision whether to allow the traffic, yes or no. Again, everybody has this for the last couple of years already, nothing really special. The last two is what, the ma what makes a distinction. And the first one is what they call an AVC, Application Visibility and Control. And what it really means is that an application visibility should be distincting Facebook from LinkedIn and either, even looking a bit deeper for a nested application like a Facebook chat or a LinkedIn email. And the control portion is really allowing you in a security policy to say whether that's allowed, yes or no. The fourth thing is what Gartner defines as extra firewall intelligence. And what that means in the last couple of years is AD or Active Directory integration, allowing you to see that it's Dennis or Roberto or some user that is basically creating this traffic. And combined with the previous one, it allows you now to see that Dennis is using Facebook and allowing you to create a security policy to say whether that's allowed, yes or no. These things are really valuable in these types of scenarios. Why? Because in a campus and a branch setting, your users are on the internal network and your services live outside on the internet. It's typically a problem of egress traffic. Traffic that's leaving your network from the users created within. But if you look at the flip side on a data center security setting, the problems are totally different because we're here dealing with an ingress situation. There are typically no users in a data center, nor are there applications, because the users live outside on the internet, accessing the services that live in your data center. So whether to see if the security industry was doing a very bad job in protecting data center, we conducted a, um, an investigation done by Ponymon, and the report shows some st stunning things based on 4,700 people that replied to it. And the four things that came out of that report, and I'll put a link into the YouTube channel, are really interesting ones because they have nothing to do with traditional firewalling nor next generation firewalling. So a next generation firewall doesn't really solve my data center issues I've, I've got right here. So the first one that people reported was web application security. This really makes sense if you're hosting something in your data center based on a web platform like an e-commerce environment where everything lives as a web application platform <clears throat> or a banking, an e-banking environment where all the customers visit your online banking. How do I make sure that I keep that application safe? How do I make sure that hackers don't maliciously misuse my application and, and basically um, open some security holes in there? 
The other one, or the second one, is a continuity, a business continuity solver. <clears throat> and that's a solution for DDoS or DDoS. How do I make sure that I have business continuity within my data center? How do I make sure that I have an, an attack, not even on the physical layer 7 layer, but on the layer 3 for instance, how do I make sure that I still have business continuity? And the DDoS has changed and evolved over the last couple of years, where it's getting smarter and it's getting an attack at a different level. And I'll talk that later on in the video on how DDoS, evol uh, DDoS evolves and how to make sure that I protect against the right type of DDoS. And the third and fourth ones are really interesting ones. The third one that people worry about is specificity. How do I make sure, in, in really easy terms, how do I block the hackers instead of the good consumers? How do I make sure that I keep the hackers outside and the consumers inside? And the typical solutions to these are the IP filters, which do not do a very good job here, but more on that in part two of the video. And the last one is certainty. If I make the decisions, the conscious decision to block an attacker, how do I make sure that it's really an attacker and not maybe a misbehaving browser or a, a typical consumer where something's gone bad? How do I make sure that I actually keep the bad guys out? Uh, if we look at the current industry, the current security industry, none of our comp competition really solves these types of issues there because there are new world issues for a data center environment. And these four came as an announcement on the RSA conference last February of 2013. And in part two of the video, I'd like to talk to you about the security and the in-depth technical things that we do to keep your data center safe. So thank you for, uh, for, uh, for looking right now and visit me in part two of the video.